Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry? I said Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. We've just heard two hours of discussion by our wonderful Sheikh about spreading the salams. Spread the salams, ease your way to the paradise. That's what it's all about. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, the next lecturer is. Beloved to me for more than one reason because wherever I go, I get called Yusuf Estes. Uh, you know, wherever I go, uh, they say, Are you Yusuf Estes or are you his son? I say, No, but I wish I was. The world we live in today, my brothers and sisters, lacks salam, it lacks peace, it lacks direction. It lacks khair, barakah, because we the Muslims, we the people that call ourselves Muslims are not explaining Islam to our beloved brothers and sisters in humanity. And this is our mistake. Sheikh Yusuf Estes is one of those people who has been doing that work on our behalf. He's been fulfilling that amana of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I've known him for many years, like I said, but one of the things that I was introduced to him with was his story on priests and preachers entering Islam. I was driving the car at the time in England, and I put the cassette in the cassette player, and I started to play it, and I nearly crashed the car because I was laughing and crying at the same time. What a beautiful story that was. He served as a delegate to the United Nations Peace Summit for Religious Leaders and U.S. Federal Chaplains from 1994 to year 2000. He lectures in universities, institutions, military and public venues and therefore all people of all faiths, Muslims, Hindus, Christians, Jews alike. He has been influential across the world at explaining this wonderful faith, the faith of peace that we're talking about tonight. He has thousands and thousands of websites and URLs in his ownership to promote this beautiful religion of peace. Some of them are shareislam.com, GodAllah.com, ProfitOfIslam.com, ScienceIslam.com, and the rest. So without further ado, without wasting too much more of your time, I would like to invite Sheikh Yusuf Estes, all the way from the United States of America, representing the Muslims. Here he is. Wow. Woo. Mufti Mink warmed you up. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, who Allah the Jalan the Muslimin, and was salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa kareem, wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu an Muhammadin. Abduhu wa Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a peace conference. Dubai, peace conference. Peace. And all of us were after peace. I wanted to share with you just a short story. This really happened long before I knew about something called Islam. Before I ever heard of the Qur'an, before I even know who is Muhammad wasallam, I was a young man, and I was engaged in a game with my friend. And he was teasing me and playing with me, and he was asking me questions. And one of the questions he asked me, he said, 
What does every person, every person on the earth, what do they want? I said, money. He said, no, not everybody wants money. I said, really? He said, no, guess again. I said, a beautiful woman. He said, no, I said, everybody. Why would a woman want a woman? I said, oh, whoops. He said, what does every person on the earth want? Education? No. A good job? No. A lot of people don't want to work at all. Finally, I had to give up. I said, what is it that every human being wants? He said, peace. Everybody wants peace. And when I thought about it, I realized, you know what, he's right. Because actually, when you think about it, the only reason people do anything is to be able to find peace. The psychiatrists and psychologists, they tell us that there are only two reasons that a person will do anything. Either a hope for a gain or a fear of a loss. What? A hope of a gain or fear of a loss. And at the end of the day, it's a hope to gain what will give you peace and a fear of losing that peace. And if we recognize this, then it only makes sense that we understand we have to go to the real source. What will bring happiness? And what will bring success? But above all, what will bring the peace in the heart? Oftentimes, we go out, we're looking for something. We say, if I just had this one thing, I would be happy. But when we get that thing, why aren't we happy? Why are we not satisfied? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said what means in English, if the son of Adam, Benny Adam, if he has a mountain of gold, he wants another one just like it. Is it right? If he has a mountain of gold, he wants another one just like it. So we will never be satisfied. We'll never find the real satisfaction in the material world, you can't. Because everything in the material world goes away. Think about it. Suppose you're a young man, huh? and you want education. I get education, ha, ah, then I can get the job that I want. Then I can get the house that I want. Then I'll have the car that I want. I'll have the woman that I want. I'll have the... Ah, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's, let's back up. Back up. Back up. You said you wanted education. But there's a lot of work to get that education. There's a lot of study to get that education. A lot of effort goes into that education. Time and money goes into that. And finally, when you walk across the stage and they play... Boom, 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 boom. Now they're going to give it to you, oh, at last. And they give you the paper. But everybody else got the paper too. Did it give me happiness? I don't think so. Because now I really feel competitive. I want to get, it. I want to get this good career going. I need, you know. And plus now I have a debt. I have to pay for the education. Ooh, man, I owe a lot of money. Oh, I need a job. I need a job quick. The job I want, uh, never mind, I got to take any job I can get. Hmm? Uh, well, okay, this will do. This will work. I can make it work. Pay the, and the, oh, wait, I need a car. I have to have a car. I want that, you know, and I got to have a wife. I need a house. And what will happen? Even if you are loaded, I'm talking about, let's suppose you do have a mountain of gold. Let's suppose. And you said, okay, <laughs> I don't need education. And I don't need a career. I got a mountain of gold. 
so I can get that woman that I want, huh? I can get the big car that I want, eh, and I can get the house that I want. But what will happen? Let's look at the car. Let's talk about that car, huh? It's a nice car, yeah? But when you first get that big, nice car, you don't want to park it in a parking lot with everybody else's car because maybe they're going to open the door and boom, oh, you scratched my car. <laughs> so I'm going to park it at the end of the parking lot and I'm going to have to walk because I don't want anybody to park next to my car. Oh, and if I get even a scratch, I'm going to be ah, upset. Oh, inside. And if somebody should bump it, oh, Oh my God, you see what? And then after a few years, get a few scratches, a few dents, a few more years, you get old. And now 10 years later, somebody said, what happened to your car? You said, that piece of junk, you want it? I want to get a new car. Is that right? You with me? You get it? What about that big house? That brand new house, oh, circle driveway. We're talking about fountain of water in the front of the house, and out back you got a big swimming pool, you got the tennis court, huh? big place. But what happened after a few years? What happens after the air conditioning doesn't work anymore, and you got to get somebody to fix it? And what happens later? Ah, the plumbing is stopped up. You flush the toilet, water goes in. Oh man! What's this? It's an old house now. You know what I'm saying? And those trees that look so nice now, they're falling down on the house when we have a storm. Oh, that piece of junk. I want to get a better house. I need a better car. And now look at me in the mirror. Oh, I don't look so good anymore. And that hot mama that I, ooh, she's getting kind of old, kind of wrinkly. Ooh, what's happening? And wait a minute. Those are not my children. Those are my grandchildren. Wait a minute. Those are my great-grandchildren. Now what? And maybe you think I'm talking about you. No. Because Yusuf Estes is a grandfather. And he's also a great-grandfather. That's in English. I don't know how great I really am. But for sure, I know what it is to get old and watch those things happen. And I'm not talking to you about a story. I'm talking to you about a real life. I have seen those things. I have had those things. At one time, I wanted airplanes. I became the dealer for Cessna in the northern part of Texas. I wanted to have stores in the malls, and I had that. But you know what? Couldn't find that peace that my friend told me about. I didn't find that peace. I couldn't discover how to get that. No matter what, I would try this and try that. It didn't come. And why? I was using the wrong word. What I was looking for was success. I want success. Success, 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 success. But success means you get what you want. That's success. Did you want something? You got it. But now, are you happy? No. I want more. Remember the mountain of gold? I want more. Another mountain of gold? I want more. I want more. Because success is getting what you want. But true happiness is wanting what you get. This is the part where you clap, you know that? Thank you. Yeah, Mufti. You gotta train this audience, you see that? Tell them what to do. They'll do it, mashallah. I love all of you for sake of Allah. And I hope what we've been presenting here tonight will stimulate stimulate our own consciousness and wake us up to the beauty of the Islam, the real, true Islam. And in real Islam, you will find that peace. 
you will find that peace because it is the ultimate success, al-falah. When the Mu'adhan, he's calling the people to come to the prayer, you know? When he calls us to come to Salah. Hayala Salah! Hayala Salah! He's saying, come to the connection with your Lord. Come to the connection with your Lord. Salah, Salah, connection. Hayala Salah! Hayala Salah! He's calling you now to the success. And it's the only success. That success that comes when you establish this connection with Allah. This is the ultimate. After La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is Iqamah Salah. Establish it. This connection. It's not prayers. Please, brothers, sisters. This is not just prayers. Prayers is dua. You can make dua anytime, anywhere, any place. But whenever you do salah, even a brand new Muslim will tell you, I experienced something in the salah. I never dreamed of before. I used to admire. Now keep in mind, some of you know that I was trying to convert a Muslim to become a Christian. Some of you know that story? Yeah. But I used to watch him. And when he would do the salah, he would stand there, you know? And he would bow. And I would remember, that's in the Bible. The people bowing, the prophets bowing to their Lord. Then he would go down upon his face. That's in the Bible. The prophets falling upon their faces in front of the Lord. And I would see that and I would be envious of him. I would say, ooh, I w this looks like he's really having what? Peace. Because when he would finish his prayer, he would turn this way. He would say something. And say something like this. Salam alaikum warahmatullahi Salam and when I would see that, I would say, look at his face. He looks so peaceful. I want this peace. It was through this example of a person living the example of the messenger, the messenger of Islam, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was through seeing a person living Islam that it helped me to get to Islam. I want to encourage all of us here tonight in this gathering, boys and girls, both of you, I want you to think, isn't it true that we really want peace inside of ourselves? Because quite frankly, you can be talking about peace, you can be writing letters, making emails about peace. You can even have some of these challenges and blogs, Facebook, talk about peace, peace, peace. But until we have it inside of us, until we feel this inside of ourselves, the satisfaction, I'm okay, called sakina, or tranquility inside of ourselves, until then, we don't really have peace. We don't have it. I would like to just recap something that we heard earlier tonight from our beloved Dr. Zafar and also from Mufti Mink talking about this beautiful word, what is Islam? What is Islam? Because in it is salam. But it's not the same as the salam when we go, salam alaikum. It's not the same. It's not the same as the salam where you're saying peace on earth, goodwill to man. That's implied. It's understood this is what you're looking for. But really, there are some other words connected with this. When we see a translation of Quran to English language, what we see, all these words, many words, translate, 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 oh, one word, it's not translated. In the dina, in the lahil, Islam. And I listened carefully to our Mufti Mink. And he said it exactly, exactly what it says in the translation. Verily with Allah, the deen, the religion, they translate deen, religion, is Islam. 
Also, anywhere else you look, one man may have taken a guy who is not a man 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 who is not In Arabic, it will say Islam in English. Is that a translation? Nope. It's not. Because a translation could always tell you a word in a language and then give you parentheses at least to explain what does it mean. Most of the translators, they take it for granted people know what Islam means. Today, look what's happened. If we said, what do you think about Islam? Just like that. Why? Well, terrorism, kidnapping, hijackers, bad guys, terrorists. <laughs> But if you said to them, what do you think about peace? Oh, yeah. It's good. Oops. Because the word Islam is so big, you can't really give it only one word. You can't really say it's salam because that is a word in Arabic already. We don't say Islam alaikum, do we? No. The word is big. And one of the shuyukh, one of the teachers that we have, he explained it to us like this. He said, Islam has so much, you have to tell a story to get one word. Because it contains, look, look, watch. Are you watching? First is surrender, to give up. Now, we Muslims are getting pretty good at giving up, you know, but that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about <laughs> surrender to Allah, give up to Allah. Then talking about submission, submission to the one God the God of Adam and Abraham, Moses, David, and Suleiman. And then, I love this, obedience. You have to obey the commandments of Allah. Not just refer to them as though, uh, well, those are the commandments, but, you know, yeah, I get around to it, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. No, no, no. A commandment has to be obeyed. Three words, surrender, submission, obedience. Let's come to another word. And this one, More or less in English, it means sincerity. Sincerity. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think. Think. Can we force somebody to be sincere? Huh? Imagine. Hey, I want you to sincerely love me or else I'm going to punch you. In it. Wait a minute. If you did that, it's not sincere. A threat? cannot bring about sincerity. Sincerity has to come from here, from this heart. If this is not sincere, there is no Islam. Which means what? This is a proof. It's a proof in our favor. Because if I have to be sincere, that means nobody can force la ikraha fideen. Nobody can force. This means there's no such thing as forcing people in Islam with a sword, with a hand grenade, with a bomb, or anything else. Islam has to come from inside the person. Because when you ask Allah, I want this peace. I want to be in peace with you. I want to be in peace with the creation. I want to be in peace with myself. I need this. Ah, that opens the door. That opens the door. It opens the very beginning of the Quran itself. Because here Allah says for us, what we're supposed to say? Ihdina, Ihdina Suratul Mustaqim. Guide us. Guide us to the straight path. And when we do, He's the only one to guide us. The only one to guide us. I loved it so much. Because when I was asking God to guide me, I put my head on the ground. On the ground. 
like I saw the Muslim doing. I saw him put his head on the ground. Wallahi, it had such an impact on me to see a man humble himself in front of the Lord above and put his head on the ground. And I said to myself, that man with his head on the ground, he found peace. And when I did it, and I asked God to guide me, I found that peace too. It's the peace that can only come when I surrender, submit, obey, in sincerity, and in peace. The fifth word, peace. The one God. But when I say peace with God, what do I mean? I mean that I will be in peace no matter what comes. If I get the big house, if I get the big car, if I get the big job, no, I'm not going to be like, uh, uh, no, I'm going to be in peace with it. This is from him, and it can go just the same way. I don't want to limit myself to only be happy when I get what I want. I want to be happy whenever Allah gives me what He wants. It's not easy. We heard some beautiful examples about it tonight, about how we feel, and I do know how it feels when we lose a child. But you have to look at a bigger picture. Allah saved that child, perhaps from something horrible. Allah took the child, but the child is now in paradise even making dua for you, saying, let my parents be with me. Let my parents be with me. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given this beautiful deen, this way of life, this peace, this salam. And salam is in Islam. But there's so much more that we need to share. When people know the meaning, they would never say these things. Our problem, brothers and sisters, really, is within ourselves. We've been too busy trying to import the things from outside, but we need to export the beauty of Islam from us to others. This peace conference here and now in Dubai is one of the best examples that you can imagine. As Dr. Zachary Knight mentioned earlier, look at how this country, this is not the biggest country in the world, is it? But yet it contains some of the biggest examples in the world. And this conference, for us, is one of the biggest examples of what can happen when so many hearts come together to promote true peace. But I wanted to save this part for the end. Many people start out by mentioning the one who really stepped up to the line. Somebody who was willing to stand out in front of everybody else and say, you know what, I don't really care what you say, I'm a Muslim. I really don't care what you try to do to me because I'm going to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and I'm going to do so the best that I can with the best effort that I can. I'm going to do that, and I really don't care if you like it or not, because I need to step up to the mark and stand up for my faith when other people are afraid to do so. And who am I talking about? You see his name right behind me right there. Because none of us would be able to be here right now speaking. None of us would be able to come forward right now None of us would be able to broadcast this if it were not for the vision of one man who is willing to stand up and say, you know what, I'm a Muslim, and we're here, and it's peace, and you need it, bring it on. Alhamdulillah, make big dua for Sheikh Muhammad. Jazakumullah khair. And I thank Allah for him and for his sons and for his family because they have really made it possible. May Allah reward them, and I'm asking you in your dua tonight in Qiyam, ask Allah, not only reward them, guide them to do more. Guide them 
so that we can all have more of this in the future. Amen. Zafamala fair. It's great to be with all of you tonight, and I think we'll wrap it up with that. Did anybody got a question? No? Okay. Save it for tomorrow night, and I think uh, Dr. Zachary can... No, no, put your hand down. Thank you. All right. Zachary will handle all questions tomorrow night. Okay? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi MashaAllah, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, talking on the topic, all of all the prophets, MashaAllah. I hope you all really benefited from that, because I certainly did. And the more I hear the Sheikh, the more mellow he gets, MashaAllah. We're going to now move to the question and answers session, which will be for a period of 30 minutes on the topic. It has to be on the topic, so questions need to be addressed on the topic succinctly and you know we're going to take it from mic one mic two and the sisters mic at the back so it's going to be mic one sisters then the middle mic again so sheikh yusuf you're ready yeah i tried to escape you escaped i, I tried to escape <laughs> they but got you're, me you're pretty well known to escape i mean you, is it right that you look like bilal phillips sometimes you know what Tonight, tonight yeah. you get two Yusufs for the price of one. Yusufan. <laughs> I love you, In chef. fact, I'm going to share my hat. There okay. we go. Ah! Alhamdulillah. Rebranding, yeah? Yeah, that's called branding, right? <laughs> Have you any questions? Yeah, there's some questions. Should we take the first one? Go ahead. Okay, so Mike one. Let's have the first question, please. First of all, I like to thank uh, and pray for the such a good peace conference organized and I want to pray and to thank Allah to bless the people who have organized this uh, great peace conference, especially Ameen. the ruler of this country. Ameen. 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 I have three questions to ask. <laughs> three? Whoa, very, whoa, 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 whoa. Very whoa. small whoa. Whoa. I have whoa. many. We have to charge you more if you ask more than one. <laughs> Inshallah. They are very small questions. I'm asking about, when I read the literature about Islam, they write as God and not as Allah. Is it correct or wrong? Because many literatures I have seen, they, have, they write God. Oh. <laughs> if you mean Allah, you should write Allah. If you mean God, in Arabic, you should write Elah. Because we have two words in Arabic. One is God, which is Elah. But then the name of God, which nobody knows outside of Muslims, it's Allah. Now, if you're an Arab Christian or an Arab Jew, you know it's Allah. We have it because it's the Arabic language. That's his name. So if you want to say God, for us, there's only one Allah. But if you want to say Allah, that's his name, mashallah. So you just have to know what you're doing. What I mean to say is, why don't they write Allah and then bracket God? They only write God and leave it. And the second question is, can we say salam to the ladies we don't know? Suppose we come across them in the lift or in our aisle. Can we say salam to them? And the third question is, whoa, wait. <laughs> Let's find out if I know that one. <laughs> can you say salams to a lady? Yes, as I heard in the lecture that we can have to say salam, spread the peace message. Yeah, but can you say Islam to a lady? Yeah. If I don't say Islam to my lady, she's going to knock me down. <laughs> Actually, if you read about the Prophet Sallallahu anybody give him salam, he will give salam back. It was only when they insulted him, he didn't say something insulting back. He just said, wa alaik, the same for you. But even then, he was careful. Because maybe somebody mispronounced it. Think about it. So if somebody says salam to you, why not? And as far as the lady goes, I don't understand what would be the difference. If she says salam, you say salam. If you pass by somebody, you say salam. Okay, we... I'm sorry, my brother. There's actually one question. Actually, you've had two. 
like the Sheikh has mentioned, we need to move over to the sister's mic now for the first question from the sisters. So, Tafadal, please state your name and your profession or occupation, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's not a question. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have one sister. Her name is Marilyn. She's from Argentina. And she, she would like to accept Islam. Allahu Allah Akbar! <laughs> or shall I say, Takbir? Allahu Akbar! <laughs> Alhamdulillah. She just has a request. Uh, she was touched by the speech of Mufti Menk. And she would like to testify with him. Tafadal, Ya Sheikh. Mufti. My sister, alhamdulillah, as I said, we love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all part of one family. And alhamdulillah, I will utter the words of Shahada, the declaration. You say it after me. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhalu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa. Wa. Rasul. Rasul. Lu. Lu. I bear witness. I wear witness. That. That. Allah. Allah. Is one. Allah is one. There is no one. There is no one. And nothing. And nothing. Worthy. Worthy. Of. Of. Worship. Worship. But. But. Allah. Allah. And. And. I bear witness. I wear witness. That. That. Muhammad. Muhammad. Is. His, his, his final messenger. Final messenger. Barakallah fiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and grant you ease and goodness. Yes, ma'am. We have one more sister who wants to convert to Islam. Sheikh, Can the sister hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, my sister, you declare after me. You ready? Yes. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammad. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa. Wa. Rasulu. Rasulullah. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship. That there is none worthy of worship. Besides Allah. Besides Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Is his worshipper. Is his worshipper. Final messenger. And final messenger. Barakallah feekum. MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. I just want to say one. Who's next? I just want to say one thing that is very, very important that I always say to those who have declared their shahada. Islam is a knowledge-based religion. The more you know about it, the more you will love it. The less you know, the more you will dwindle. Remember that. So if you want to love this deen, you need to learn it as much as you can. Make an effort. And if you don't know much, a year from now, you will be dwindling. So some of us who might have been Muslim for long and maybe born Muslim, when we don't know much about the faith, we dwindle. We need to learn. And that is one of the first steps. 
then we will be able to put into practice and so on. May Allah grant us all acceptance. Like I say, Jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Who's next? You're next. No, no. Who's next? Inshallah. Barakallah. Ask him, ask him, ask him. Who's next? Who's next? Is there anyone else, my sisters, there? Who's next? The brothers? Sheikh Yusuf has conscripted me here. I have to say, who's next? So who's next? I'm next. MashaAllah. Barakallah. Subhanallah. Whoa, Allah Akbar. Well, actually, they broke the rule because they're only supposed to be uh, ask, asking questions, not making statements. That's one of your rules. That's true. MashaAllah, but we I like that being broken. Can we break that rule again? Uh, yeah, every day. Who's next? <laughs> Let's get some more. Forget the questions. I want to see more people stand up and say, you know what? I want that peace. I mm -hmm. want to find that inner peace. Maybe some people got Muslim names. Well, they never found that inner peace. Absolutely. Maybe so. they were born in a Muslim house, but they didn't find that real salam inside. Yeah. If this is the case, it's time, it's really time to do that pledge of allegiance to Islam. The real yeah. pledge that can really bring about ah, salam. <laughs> MashaAllah. Can we move now? Where were we? To the middle mic, I believe it is. Yep, there we are. Please state your name and Salaam your profession. Alaikum salam. My Kareem, and I just wanted to ask a quick question for you, Dr. Yusuf, please. It happens that I get involved into many conversations about Islam. And the most common questions that I get asked are, number one, if today we're promoting peace, then why Islam was spread by this word? Especially for the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many verses to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to be ready to fight and to be ready to win and plan ahead. That's number one question. Number two, and the stop. most common question. Okay, can we just uh, take that question first? All right. I'm glad you asked that question. And I'm actually happy to have a chance to put your mind at ease and your heart at peace. Because what you said as a question is not true as a question nor as a statement. That's not true. Islam never spread by the sword. Nobody can spread peace. Nobody can spread the desire, the sincerity by force. We already mentioned that in our talk. In case you missed that, you don't spread sincerity by force, but rather by love. Because when somebody really loves something, they want it, they desire it. We talked about the love of gold. And why do people go after it? Because they love it. What about the love of peace? The love of being at peace inside that can only come when you recognize you have a creator and you're true to your creator and you open your heart for your creator. That's peace. That's real peace. There's nothing better than that. As far as your comments about the sword, let me share with you something, again, to put your mind and heart at peace. It isn't Islam that has a document loaded with the word Saif, Muhammad, and so on. Those words are only a few of the many words you'll find in the Arabiya. There are many words in Arabic. Sword, khanja, dagger. Yeah. I challenge you to find that word anywhere in the Quran. The document today that contains so many references to sword that in the concordance of the Bible, you find pages and columns after columns of references where it's used. Even they said this about our prophet Jesus, salam, which we, as Muslims, we don't say this. But we hear people saying that Jesus says, don't think I came with peace. I came not with peace, but with a sword. Where'd you read that? You didn't read that in the Quran. You find in the Quran that Jesus is saying, worship your God and my God, your Lord and my Lord. And then you will find what? Peace. So be at peace with this knowledge that your religion, Islam, never promoted anything other than understanding what it is. 
to have real peace. I want to share with you something that our sponsor said, and I read it today in translation, that we don't find real peace until people have their rights. And the only time that Muslims are even allowed to fight, commanded to fight, to stand up in combat, is when there are no rights for the people. Until there can be rights, then there will be peace. And I subscribe to it 100%. Uh, hello, my name is Mohsen Biswas. I'm a student. And my question is, will there be peace on the Day of Judgment? Or will there be chaos? <laughs> Good question. I like that one. Will there be peace on Yom Kiyama? Will there be peace on the Day of Judgment? Or will there be chaos? It all depends on whether you accept it now. Because what you accept here is what you'll find there. Simple as that. Thank you. No, I want to give you the proof. No, I, I don't, I'm not just going to say a platitude and send you off. Hold on a second, okay? Because our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said he very clearly, nobody will remain in the hellfire except those who refuse. They said... Who would refuse to leave the hellfire? He said, those who refuse that message here today. So we, as Muslims, have a responsibility to convey the understanding of true, real peace and how to achieve it. Then if somebody says, no, I don't want that, I want to make up my own way, ma'asalama, have a good one. And that's the meaning, really, of Allah forgive me for my poor Texas Arabic, but the meaning behind it is very powerful. Whoever wants to make up a different way, a different religion, other than what Allah has commanded for them, whoever doesn't want to have peace with their Lord, they're the losers. They are the real losers. And for sure, that's the ones who will find the chaos. As far as those who said, you know what? I need God to guide me. I'm opening my heart. Surrender. Submission. Obedience. Sincerity. And peace. They'll receive that peace here and the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. How old are you as a Muslim today? 23. Okay, so let's move over to the sister's mic again, and maybe we're going to get some more statements. Shahadas, maybe, inshallah. Yes, That'll be beautiful. Want it? Check. Ready. Yeah. Where's the statement? Come on. Next, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm sorry, this is not a shahada, but it's a question that's been troubling me. Um, I'm a journalist, and the news is always inundated with um, stories of people using jihad um, to commit atrocious crimes. Can you please explain what jihad means and what does it mean to fight in the way of Allah? Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, sister, for that good question. And yes, we do receive that question, especially in the emails and a lot of the websites trying to attack Islam. It's important for us as Muslims to know today what's the difference between jihad and qitl. Because... I read a translation of the Quran to English from Arabic that they did something strange. They translated the word in Arabic to a different word in Arabic. They translated Arabic to Arabic. I don't know, is that permissible? I don't know. But it said it like this. This is in chapter 2, that's Surah Baqarah, verse 190 and 191. The word that was used in Arabic is qital or kital. But they translated it and they said jihad. So these are still, it's still an Arabic word. It says do jihad on them. Oh. Now what you find in the first one, it uses the word fight. It translates the word fight. The second verse, jihad or kill. Kill them. Slaughter them. One of them said, slay them. This means slaughter. Slaughter in Arabic is the biha. No wonder they said, oh, you're going to cut my head off now, huh? The biha. Oh. So what it says, slay them. 
we ask our teacher, from Egypt, by the way, very lovely teacher, explained many good things to us. And he said, the misunderstanding is because you didn't understand the Arabia. The word in the first unit is the same as in the second. In other words, the word kital is mentioned in the first verse, and the word kital is in the second verse. Why did you say fight here and slaughter here? He said it would be better if you use the word combat. You can combat them if they combat you, but if they stop, then you stop. Otherwise, you're the aggressor. Verily, Allah does not love the aggressor. Meaning if people are coming at you, fighting at you, attacking you. And this was revealed in relation to the ones who put on ihram to go perform their pilgrimage. We call it pilgrimage in English, hajj or umrah. And they were being told that a superstition they had was not valid. If people are attacking you, you can defend yourself. If people are taking away your very lives in front of your eyes, you don't just stand there and go, well, I'm wearing two sheets. I'll just stand here and watch you cut us up. No. And it was clear. It was clear. It was Qatar. They translated his fight. If you said combat, this would make sense. In the next verse, when it says, وَقْتُلُهُمْ, this is an imperative of the verb, meaning what? Combat them even in mortal combat. If it results in killing, that's how it goes, because they're killing you. But again, go back to what it says, if they stop, you stop. Don't you swing a blade after they put theirs down, because then you're the aggressor. So it showed us the rights and the limits at the same time. There's no such thing in Islam as spreading this kind of, we call it chaos or fitna. There's no such thing as that, and you're saying you're doing it in the name of jihad. Jihad is a general term which actually means struggling, striving, and working for a successful outcome. When you make jihad by building a huge library or a university, when you make each jihad to find the answer to an important question, this is jihad. Along with that is this kital, the combat required of those who are truly going to defend the faithful. If people are coming to take away the peace and the harmony and the love that you have in your family and your, your society, and you're going to just stand there and go, oh, well, I'm going to be peaceful. It doesn't work like that. Our prophet even allowed people to slap the cheek, turn the other cheek, yes, on his person. People did a lot of bad things to him. But when they came to take away the rights of all the people, not even let them worship Allah, he said, if they come at you now, fighting, then you have to fight back until they stop. And that's as simple as you can make it. And tell me any respectable nation that does not have a standing army ready to go to combat to defend the rights of the people of their nation. I'd like to know. Islam is haq. It's absolute truth on every subject. And don't be afraid to stand up for what is true, whether you're answering a question or if people are attacking you. Stand up for your beliefs. Zakhalak, Zakhalak, Sheikh Yusuf, mashallah. So we're going to take the next question from the middle microphone. Next question. Please state your name and your occupation. Succinctly, the question, we're going to get a couple more questions in, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm Fuad. I'm um, 10 years old. My question is, I was excited to attend many people get into Islam. I am uh, feeling in peace. What is your message to all kids in the world? Great one, man. alaikum. I think you already got a good message just then. <laughs> but sometimes the question has the answer already in it, and I think you did a good job. So I'm just going to ask you, uh, you're 10 years old, am I right? Hello? 10 years old. 10, yeah? Yes. Did you used to be 9? <laughs> did you used no, to be... No, no, no. Did you... <laughs> You're ruining a wonderful joke here. Listen, did you used to be nine years old? Yes. And before that, you were eight years old? Yes. 
And before that, you were seven? Yes. Wallahi, be careful. The same thing happened to me. <laughs> you might turn 11, who knows? Your question really is beautiful. Our youth, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and all of our guests that are here tonight, our youth are our future. Whether you're a Jew, a Christian, a Hindu, a Buddhist, or a Muslim, realize this. Our real enemy, our worst enemy, is always within. And unless we strive to find peace within ourselves, how will we ever recognize the peace that is around us in this world? So let us work for peace for the sake of the future of our children. Thank you. Thank you. MashaAllah. Hopefully, inshallah, this small sheikh will be up here in a few years' time at this peace convention Ameen. addressing us. Ameen. Ameen. That's what we need. Yeah? I'm with you. Yeah, good. MashaAllah, let's go to the next question on mic number one. Hello, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Jam Ahmed. I work in uh, NMC Hospital as administration. I would like to thank Yusuf Estes because I feel like you're still a student like us. Because Dr. Zakir Dyke always like the teacher. <laughs> he tells the verses and all that. So my question is, if we read Quran in English, does it reduce the peace? As Nu'man, I think he emphasizes our reading in Arabic. Does it reduce the peace or we read, still we get the message? You know what? I love this question because I had the same question when I came to Islam. As a matter of fact, I put it stronger to the poor Imam that had to deal with me, you know. I've always been a little bit on the <clears throat> rough side, you know what I'm saying, right? And I'm like, so what are you telling me? I got to learn the Arabic language to find peace? I mean, I got it right there. Isn't that the same thing in English? Actually, let's think about it for a second. By reading it in English, I've heard some of our brothers from Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, I'm trying to remember everybody's country here. Anyway, they would say, you know, when I read it in my language, in Urdu or in English, I get meaning. But if I just keep reciting in Arabic, I don't get the same meaning. Sometimes I could find peace in my language. Why? Because I'm understanding the words. But how about this? Suppose you learn the Arabic language. Huh? Numan Ali Khan is here. He's happy to help you do that. Yeah, man. And you learn the Arabic language so that it's in your head. When you read it, you go, yeah, I get that. I get that. I get that. Then not only are you going to find peace, it's going to be deep-rooted because you're hearing the words of your creator. You're hearing the actual sound that came at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding. So you get the picture? Yes, you could get meaning. If you get understanding, you get some peace. But if you want the real salam, take time. Learn the Arabiya. You know, I want to share with something. I'm not trying to just give free commercials to our brother, but I would like to mention something. You need to know this. If somebody offered you a job right now and said you could make 100,000 American dollars every year, free house, free car, Huh? You like it? Yeah. Who doesn't like that? It sounds good, yeah? All you got to do is learn a, a new computer language that just came out. Learn this computer language and spend, it's going to take you two months to learn it, though. Ooh. Hey, 100 grand? I'm ready. Let's go. How about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something more than the universe and what is in it? More than what? more than the universe and what is in it, because every, yes, every time you speak a letter, a letter, and Prophet Sallallahu said, Ali, Flam, Mim is not one, but Ali is one. Lam is one. Mim is one. Imagine the, how, how much blessing you're gonna get, how much reward you get just for reading Surah Fatiha and understand it at the same time. Allahu Akbar. Wa Sheikh. Going to take one final question, and it's going to be from the sisters, inshallah. 
Go ahead, sisters. Or one of the sisters, shall I say. We have a sister who wants to take the Shahada. All right. Come up, Mufti Menk. Bring him back up. My name? Up. Yeah, come on. Um, Anyone you want to take it with? Mufti Menk or Sheikh Yusuf? <laughs> You've got a choice. Two for the price of one. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Gigi Margalio, and I want to take you Allah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Takbir. Sister, can you repeat after me? Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Allah. 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 Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa. Wa. Rasuluh. Rasulu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is none. That there is none. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Besides Allah. Besides Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. May peace be upon him. May peace upon him. Is his worshipper. Is his worshipper and final messenger? And final messenger. Mashallah. Barakallah. I'm sure the sisters there will follow up with you, inshallah. Barakallah. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Any more of the sisters? No, no. Who's next? <laughs> mashallah. Barakallah. Sheikh Yusuf is quite enthusiastic. We all are, but we show it in different ways. Mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am uh, Maria Diana Manalo, babysitter at the, in the school of uh, children with mental disabilities. I am uh, converted also. I agree that Islam is spreading its peacefulness, but I just wonder why uh, so many sisters, they keep on praying. Why still they don't have the peace on themselves? They knew how the Quran perfect was, but they still doing the don'ts. One told me, oh, I will just only pray and then my sin will be forgiven because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. It's easy to, it's like that. It's right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, Allahu alam. Sister, this question is a very good and a very timely question because many of us today, ourselves, wonder why I'm praying. You know, I'm doing my salah and I'm asking Allah, I'm not seeing anything. Or I'm doing things bad and I, I pray, but still I keep doing the bad things. Shaitan will come to that person and tell him, why don't you just quit doing salah? Why don't you just quit Islam? Why don't you just back off? You know, you're a bad person. Allah, he's not going to forgive you. Just get away from it. Na'udhu billah, astaghfirullah. That's exactly what shaitan wants us to know. But the fact is, as long as that person is praying, you don't know what's in their heart. You don't know what Allah is doing with them. You don't know how the difficulties, the experience that they have. None of us is perfect, brothers and sisters. None of us, since the time of Muhammad وسلم, every one of the people have been making mistakes. And I personally have probably made more than anybody. But there's something that goes with this, sister, that if you don't swing, huh? if you don't swing at the ball, then you never hit a home run. So you keep trying, and you keep trying, and give everybody excuse. Give them excuse. Maybe this, maybe that. Give them an excuse. This is Islam. And if we'll just pray for them, instead of criticizing them, it could help. Some of the problem we have in our world today is simply because we pray against our rulers instead of praying for them. We pray against our teachers instead of praying for them. And this is self-destruction. 
It's a worse kind of self-destruction. When Muslims attack other Muslims, this is the worst possible scenario. The best thing is when we see our brothers and sisters faltering, we see they are down, help them, support them, give them encouragement, give them a reason to keep coming back to the masjid, give them a reason to keep participating and joining in. Even if they say stuff is crazy, mistakes and so, but still, take it easy. Take it easy. Learn a lesson from the way of our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. He had so much patience, so much patience with everybody. Even the Munafiq king, those who were the worst hypocrites, he didn't point them out and say, there's a hypocrite, there's a hypocrite, there's a hypocrite. He never did that. So we should be the same way. Let's take it easy on each other. I pray for you, I ask you to pray for me. And then let Allah be the judge. Allah said, Salaam Alaikum. Zakhala Khair, that's the question and answer session over. That's Sheikh Yusuf Estes' first lecture, which was Call of All the Prophets. That's over. And mashallah, what a beautiful, blessed session that we've had for the first inaugural session of this 2014. Peace Convention in Dubai here. Amazing, mashallah. Four shahadas. I just got to say, wait, takbir. Wait, make it winter. Make it winter. Okay. Make it winter. Make you know, it winter. Make he's saying it make it winter. it winter, right? You know what that means? We're looking for number five. Number five. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide number five. Amen. In this session right now, inshallah. Live on television. Probably, what is it? A hundred million people are going to be looking at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be looking at this. This is the important thing. So my brothers and sisters, what a beautiful session like I said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us many, many more sessions like this. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and guide us upon the straight path. Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever living, he is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent his messengers To warn his creatures Of the grave dangers Of worship other than Allah, there is none greater.